Hey kids, I saw this headline and I just had to say something because it pissed me off. So uh, let's talk about it. Let's start the music. This is a short one. It's a short one. Let's start the music. <laughs> All right, so I just I was just checking the markets and stuff, and I saw this uh, this headline: UBS chairman warns against Bitcoin for Main Street and wants no blame if the market crashes. And people, I gotta say something about this. And the following editorial is my opinion only. It does not reflect the opinion of my parent company. Oh, I don't have a parent company. Uh, does not re reflect the opinion of. Anybody other than me, and if you disagree with me, that's fine too. But I think this is something that is so insidious, and it is hypnosis. It is the modern mainstream equivalent of mind fucking. Okay, so here's how it works the chairman of the UBS Bank, the world's largest manager of wealth, Axel Weber. Weber started on January stated on January 23rd that he does not advise the bank's clients to invest in cryptocurrencies although he makes a distinction between institutional and retail clients when discussing the subject. Speaking to CNBC at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Weber made the distinction between helping institutional clients enter crypto markets as opposed to helping retail clients do the same. There's institutional clients, and if they want to invest in Bitcoin, they are grown-ups. I mean, they know what they're doing. They have the capability of judging this risk. On the other hand, according to Weber, retail or individual clients, often referred to as Main Street investors, that's you and me, people, need to be protected from investing in the crypto market due to their presumed ignorance of the products. Poor little people. They need us big banks and they need us big governments to protect them because they're too stupid. They're too ignorant to take care of themselves. Huh. wonder why we're stupid and ignorant. Has it anything to do with the shitty schools that the powers that be in the governments that be allow us to go to? I don't know. Uh, referencing the blame put on banks for selling complex financial products to clients before the 2008 economic crash, Weber said he wants to avoid a repeat scenario and deflect blame if the crypto market sees a similar crash. I said this this morning. They're looking at cryptos as the fall guy when the house of cards of this fiat money that they print up out of nothing and the fractional reserve banking system that basically if you put a hundred bucks in a bank that means they can lend nine hundred dollars out of nothing based on your hundred dollars that's all they have to keep in the bank is ten percent of their deposits they can just make up money and loan it out. This whole system is built on debt, people. Cryptos are not. So, sorry, I'm getting steamed up. I'm fired up, people! Uh, if there's a retail client affected in the future, the question will be again, who is the bank that sold them these products, and then banks will be blamed again for what's happened? Like, hello, peer-to-peer, -peer, motherfucker. Peer-to-peer. -peer. Like, that's why Main Street Main Street investors want crypto because they can't get shit from banks other than deeper in debt. I mean, just yesterday I got four credit card enticement letters. Ooh, let's give you let's give you free money and then charge you interest. It costs them nothing to give money. They make money on the interest. Read up on this people. If you're a Main Street investor, Go to the frickin' library. Go online. There's something called Google. Learn. Study. Research. Do not give away your power to these professionals. Your wealth, your financial well-being is too important to be left to the professionals. That's all I'm saying. Now, in January of this year, the North American Securities Administration Administrators Association, the NSAA, the NASS, no, the NASAA, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, 
warned Main Street individual investors against investing in cryptocurrencies and initial coin offerings. One of the main reasons the NASAA cited for the warning was individual investors not being sufficiently informed about the products in which they are potentially investing. And you know what? Yes, the learning curve is steep, people. You're going to learn. And I find I learned a lot better when I got some of my own actual money, my hard-earned money, on the line because I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to learn. One other thing. Why is it that there's so many state lotteries and that the average person thinks that the way to get rich is to spend huge amounts of money on these lottery tickets? Go into any convenience store in New York State, where I live, and, you know, you see people putting down a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, 25 bucks, 10 bucks, buying lottery tickets. They do that almost every day. What if they just bought that much crypto every day when the market was down? Huh? Oh, they might actually learn how to manage their money and they might make mistakes and they might lose money. Hello, people. <laughs> we live in the weirdest time on the face of the planet when the government is wanting to take care of everyone. But the bottom line is the banks own the governments. They do. The banks own the governments. And when the banks fail, guess who bails out the banks? The governments. Oh, guess who pays the governments the money to bail out the banks? Oh, you and me. Fuck those people. All right, people? Sorry, I got steamed up. And again, this has been an editorial and it has not been for children. It's for grown-ups. People who can handle the reality of the fact that we live in an oppressive, totalitarian economic regime. Really, it really is. And it is a house of cards. And if you want to freak yourself out, go to Visual Capitalist and check out... Oh, i got to have a link now that I'm talking about it. Okay, hold on. All right, I didn't find the chart that I was looking for, but I found one of the charts. Check out visualcapitalist.com and... Again, I don't get paid anything to send you there. I just think it's a cool site. Uh, the buying power of the U.S. dollar. Okay, since 1913, when the central bankers took over, what can one dollar buy? One pair of patent leather shoes. Okay, that was in 1907. In 1913, one woman's house dress. In 1920, five pounds of sugar. In 1934, 16 cans of Campbell's soup. In 1940, 20 bottles of Coca-Cola. In 1950, one Mr. Potato Head. In 1960, two movie tickets. In 1971, three Morton TV dinners. In 1980, one bottle of Heinz ketchup. In 1990, one gallon of milk. In 2000, one Wendy's hamburger. In 2010, one song on iTunes. Uh... So, the bottom line is, who's in charge of that? Why does the dollar buy less and less every year? Because, people, then it works out better for the banksters. It really does. So, that's my point today, and uh, I'm sticking to it, and uh, hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you're pissed off too. <laughs> Use the anger to take care of yourself. Uh, because these fuckers are out of our control, but we are within our control. And I'll say that over and over again. We can only deal with what we have the power to change and control. And the only thing we can do is make a decision to learn as much as we can, to educate ourselves, and to take consistent, intelligent action as best we can to grow our abundance, to grow our prosperity, to grow our own wealth, and to reinvest it in things that are tangible and that will last no matter what happens because we are expecting a pretty big crash pretty soon. And you'll see it creeping into the news. It's on its way. It's coming and they're going to blame cryptos for it. You know they're going to do that. They're going to blame cryptos. So anyway, it's interesting times, people. Thank you very much. If you like this, please subscribe. If you don't like it, that's okay too. But if you do like it, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and share this with somebody, and I'll see you in the next one. This has been a special report from the Crypto Cranker's Guide to the Bitcoin Galaxy of Greed and Grooviness. My name is Mark Shepard, January 23rd. 
start the music. <laughs> 